Hello, my name is Carolyn Cofield, and today I wanted to share with you my testimony. I call it my Job story. You know, we read the Bible um, and the stories in the Bible and quote our favorite verses like beautiful poetry sometimes, but it's not always easy living when we're facing different trials and tests and circumstances in our own personal life up front and close. You know, take the story of Job, for instance. I remember as a young girl, uh, my mother teaching me of all songs to sing, all of my appointed time, I will wait until my change come. I don't have a clue to what I was singing about, uh, but I was just singing it because my mother taught it to me. I even sang the verses. Job's servants came running to him saying all your cattle were dead, only later to return to tell him that all of his children were dead. Uh, when Job's wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? Job's initial response was, you don't sound like my wife. Would we receive the goodness and kindness of God and not the adversity? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that was then. And this is now my testimony. I was married uh, as a young woman and I married a young minister. Um, he, we were raised in the inner cities, you know, called the hood. And um, there's good in the hood. And even when I got married, I was thought to be a barren woman. Naturally and spiritually, my husband prayed for me and he also prayed for his son. He just wouldn't let me stay barren. Uh, he, uh, God bless us with not just one son, but with seven children, five girls and two boys. And he even called me to teach and uh, minister alongside my husband. But in the year 2000, as a family, we experienced one of the hardest trials of our, our lives in our marriage when we buried one of our daughters and she was 20 years old and a single mom. And then again, in 2014, we buried another daughter who was married with three children. I've learned so many life lessons from the book of Job, one being that we own nothing. You know, we're just called to stewardship. We steward, we don't own anything, but God owns everything. I also learned that we live in a very broken and fallen and sinful world, and life help happens to us all. No one is exempt. I've learned it's not what we go through, but it's how we go through and how we come out on the other side. Learn that pain is pain, uh, but I also learn that pain has a purpose more than just to hurt, you know. Um, I've learned that, um, that we can take that pain and we can sow it back into the kingdom for um, a higher purpose. Um, God gave us Matthew 2.18. There was a voice in Rama and it was Rachel and she was weeping for her children and she refused to be comforted because they were no more. And from that scripture, we began a ministry to serve teen and single moms. Couldn't bring our daughter back, but we surely could help somebody else. And it was called, as I said, Rachel's Tea House. But in 2013, God also gave us a women's prayer ministry called Daughters of the Dawn, calling women to be early risers and to pray, to pray, knowing that hope comes out of the ashes. In the midst of Job's tragedies, he, you know, he initially made a godly response, but then life kept happening. The balls came. He had three friendly enemies accusing him of having um, hidden sin in his life, causing that him, causing him at some point to wish he had just never been born. But through it all, Job chose to worship God. And like Job, our crisis didn't go away or neither did our faith in God who promised never to leave us or to forsake us. Like Job, we didn't then, nor do, do we understand everything now or need to know the why of all of our trials and tribulations. The questions are complicated, but the answer is what we call choice related. Um, because by faith, we learn to trust God and his word. We know that in the best of times and in the worst of times, in the good times, in the hard times, in the bad times, God is good all the time. That's not just a cute cliche because God is still God all the time. Uh, we bring glory to God when we continue uh, to trust God through our pain, through our trials, and through our tests, knowing that he has a way of working everything out for our ultimate good and, of course, for his ultimate glory. Colossians 1. 27 says Christ in you the hope of glory and that has become my um, I would say my new reality with all um, with all the stories we've had you know uh, that you know if, if God didn't get the glory in the story it's just another sad bad story uh, but with Job he was challenged with like a hundred and eighty questions over a hundred and eighty questions but his response was I know that you can do everything God and so basically we make our plans but God's purposes will prevail he went on to say that he had uttered 
things that he didn't understand, things way too complicated, things too wonderful to comprehend. He said, I heard of you, but now I see the God uh, basically who sees me. So Job's response should be our response. All of my appointed time, I will wait until my change come. In the end, Job and his wife were doubly blessed by God with long life, seeing four generations of children and grands. And we too have over 20 grands and still counting, have experienced too many blessings and miracles to even number or name. So I thank God for caring for us in the difficult times and the hard times when it's hard to believe, hard to hear, uh, hard to see, and, and for helping us to worship him even in those times. See, this is not just Job's story, but it's my story. And to God be the glory. God bless you.